Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Deliberately TV with myself Anthony Mitchell, Florian Vierka and today's special guest Thibaut Sala. Welcome Thibaut. Hello, hello everyone. Hi Thibaut. How are you guys? Good, very, very good thanks and yourself? I'm fine, I'm fine. It's uh, good weather in France today. I can see it, I can see the sun behind you so we're jealous of that. Um, so great, just to give a little intro to the lesson, so the way we we see this episode, it's like basically um, petit déjeuner and it consists of learning together about the landscape in France in terms of email marketing in this topic, deliverability. So we hope Thibaut can help to fill us in um, bits and bits and pieces about how it works out there. So oh, as you know, uh, the main uh, ISP here in France is uh, called Orange. Orange slash Wanadu because Wanadu was the former name. Uh, I would say they they stand for about 30%, maybe 40% sometimes of a, a good database. And then you have a, a few other ISP, uh, I mean French ones, uh, such as Free and SFR and Bouygues and uh, La Poste. Uh, and all of them, they stand together maybe for 15% in all, and the rest is... Uh, uh, I would say international ISP such as Microsoft, uh, Gmail, and uh, Yahoo. Uh, what's the um, ISP share of local ISPs? The, the name of the local ISPs? Uh, no, lo the share. Is it like 50% oh, yes. or 70? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, you want the. the okay. Uh, so the fixed number. I would say, oh, in yeah, detail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, in detail. No, okay. rough, rough estimation is okay. No, no, rough estimate. Uh, so 35% uh, orange. Uh, I would say 8% uh, to 10% uh, free, free.fr, uh, and then uh, I would say 3% uh, for SFR, free to five, uh, maybe 1 or 2% for numericable, and Bouygues Telecom would stand for 1%, maybe 2 tops, and La Poste, La Poste is different, it's not really an ISP, it's more a uh, provider of email. And uh, I would say they stand for three to five percent. It depends. Very interesting, Thibaut. What would you say is the biggest challenge um, delivering emails in in France, for example, with the French ISPs? If you had to pick one. So since I, I've said uh, the the importance of uh, Orange Wanadu, I would say you would not have you don't want to piss them off because otherwise uh, you're stuck with uh, forty percent of your database that is unreachable or filtered, which is not good. And one thing important also with uh, Orange addresses is that uh, they are mostly family addresses. So when you have, you know, a contract, you have like, the dad or the family contract and everyone, each one has its own address. So you know that it is a family address. It's not uh, uh, something that you take only to register, you know, and just dump when it's, uh, it's full. So, so it is important, it's very important. So as many, many uh, ISP, you have to respect uh, uh, the people you send to. And obviously you, only, you should only address the active and uh, the people who have uh, really given their consent to receiving uh, email uh, marketing. Okay, so that's the same more or less than in uh, Europe or is there any uh, local specifics what would you say? And, and Orange has a, a very uh, dedicated and very active uh, abuse desk uh, run by, by Alain Dustalet that you might have uh, encountered in uh, other associations or syndicates or yeah. uh, conferences. And uh, so they are very open to, to dialogue when there's a problem because some, some problem can uh, happen. And so the only thing is to be prepared and to be sure that the problem, the origin has been solved and so it won't happen again and they are very open-minded and uh, and benevolent uh, when you go prepared the important thing with french uh, isp <laughs> is go prepared i think it's the same everywhere but uh, well uh, they are so, sometimes understaffed so they need their time so we better prepare and, and help them now my question is uh, is it important uh, so the the language itself does it play a role whether you send email in French or in is English same as um, same as well as or what would you say? Okay, no, I I, I won't say that uh, language is a big barrier. I think some of the Bayesian uh, filtering uh, are uh, a 
affected, but I've not seen that, uh, let's say, English uh, database addressing French uh, clients have been touched by bad deliverability. I don't think it's an issue as long as you respect the non-spammy words and most importantly, the, the good practices of segmentation. Cool. Very interesting. And I, he I hear this filter um, that people keep talking about. Is it very secure? How does that work? Uh, sometimes called Vade Retro, you know, it's the, the thing that uh, the, the clerk used to do to repel uh, uh, undead and uh, bad uh, vampires. Uh, that means to repel. <laughs> so Vade Retro is a filter that repels uh, the, uh, the bad emails. And so Vade Retro, Vade Secure, it's the same company now, it's just a change in name. Uh, they are located in Lille, which is now north of France. And, uh, but they work with uh, all the ISP here in France. So they are one layer uh, of uh, filtering. And so sometimes you, you get filtered or sometimes blocked because of an issue uh, based on, on uh, Vade Retro filtering. Mostly it's complaint and uh, their own uh, network of spam traps. So do you, you have like, several, several layers. You have the uh, orange has its own layer of spam traps then uh, Vade Retro, and then you can also have CloudMark and other uh, stuff. So it's quite IP-based, right? So for Orange, if I um, know correctly, you have a um, specific threshold of allowed complaints per IP per hour um, that you should, uh, yeah, should stay below. Um, mm -hmm. is, are the other ISPs working similar, or what would you say? I would make some one tiny correction. It's not so much IP per hour or complaint per hour. It's per, per campaign, per campaign. campaign, and they have their okay. own uh, their own engine to recognize uh, the same campaign disguised, you know, like snowshoe uh, things. And so they are very good at uh, figuring out uh, this is the same campaign, but it's been spread out. So it, it's a per campaign basis. And so at one time, the, the threshold was 3,000 complaints per campaign. Uh, Independent the of the site. Of... Uh, uh, yeah, so the it... size doesn't matter. <laughs> it always matters, you know. <laughs> in France, it always No, <laughs> no but <laughs> what, what I mean is, uh, it, it's, there's one thing that, uh, that you're pointing out. It's the fact that uh, you could send 1 million email and get 3,000 complaints or just uh, 5,000 email and get 3,000 complaints, you would be blocked the same. So at one time they were just uh, filtering through that and now they also have entered a uh, percentage base. And I would say that uh, the complaint level they accept is around, after 1% complaint, you can start seeing some filtering. And remember, it's 1% uh, the orange complaint you don't receive because there's no feedback loop. So okay. you, you you know you know the difference. Maybe we'll we, we'll cover that in a, another episode. But it's it, uh, it's something that sometimes you know it's difficult to explain to the to the clients to the to the sender. It's that uh, the ESP has its own way of uh, counting complaints, and uh, the ISP are the only one really to know uh, the real number. So after one percent on orange side, you get problems, and I would okay. say at three percent you get a call from Alain Dustale, <laughs> and you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's very the, nice, but you don't want that call. Which right. is fair enough. I mean, three percent really of complainers is is really massive. Um, I would yeah. say so. Um, that's that's fair enough in my eyes. Right, Anthony? You mentioned. I was going to say that is a huge volume. So you mentioned uh, feedback loops. So that also took us onto a topic: signal spam. So what? How do they fit into the French landscape? And what do they do? SPAM is an association, so it is a non-profit uh, organization. Um, the the ESP and the ISP and some and the filtering companies such as Vade Secure and some other uh, people are members of uh, of that. And together uh, they congregate and they uh, I would not say they fight crime because they don't dress up in latex and stuff, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> they like <laughs> Japanese food, by the way. Uh, yeah. and no, no, but they, they help uh, spread uh, the good practices. And they also have, you, as, as you mentioned, they have a very good tool which is uh, called the, the feedback loop, uh, signal spam feedback loop. 
And one important thing is that Orange is a, a, a main participant of, of that feedback loop, and that is the only way, I repeat, the only way to get the number of complaints that you have on the Orange network. And so you only have a number you per day. Every day you get a, a CSV file and uh, per IP, per IP. So basically, if you only have dedicated IPs, you know who has uh, uh, what uh, number of uh, complaints. And that helps you deal and, and talk with your client and say, look, there's a problem, obviously. You have too much complaints. You have to, to better aim and better segment. So that is signal spam. Uh, maybe in time they would uh, consider having a real feedback loop that allows you know to opt out the complainer. But so far it's not the case. Uh, one of the other uh, member of feedback of uh, signal spam is uh, Lapost.net, yes. and uh, they do have their own full feedback loop. So, but you register on their own postmaster, and so uh, for, it's a very small number, but yet it is. Uh, it is good to, to have that because then you, you, you opt them out. And uh, they have a different threshold, I think, for uh, La Poste. Uh, abuse there told about like one to three percent complaint that they accept. So, as you said, the NCNCD is a syndicate. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a French syndicate of uh, all the, the sender, but also the clients and the big, uh, the big names of, the, of the, um, the companies and the business. Uh, so it could be big clients, and they all uh, meet there. And sometimes they also change or try to change the the law or the rules. Uh, and sometimes yes, because well, sometimes you know the legislator is not really a specialist of that. So they have the idea of uh, what should be done, and then there's the practical side. And uh, such syndicate helps uh, uh, make everyone uh, would not say happy, but uh, running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would be surprised, you know. French affiliation can be very dirty. <laughs> uh, okay, you speak out of your experience from your client. Uh, <laughs> I, I would not go into details, but, uh, you know, affiliation is a, is a dangerous uh, yeah. uh, and, and special. I mean, not dangerous per se, but you can do it clean, you can do it uh, not so clean, and you can really do it dirty. And as you know that uh, the new legislation next year will likely change the basis of the business for most uh, people. So, yes. In which way? Can you... Oh, uh, well, they, basically it would be the, the law or the, the rules would be adjusted to the German laws, meaning it's not double opt-in, but all the rest would be very similar to what the CSA requires in terms of uh, proof of consent. Uh, when, you, when you register an address, you will have to have... Uh, the IP is still debatable because, well, there's... Uh, people who don't want that in France, but uh, mostly the timestamp and uh, also the, the origin, called the, this could be the URL or the origin of the point of registration, let's say that. And everything has to be uh, kept and be able to be, to be given if someone complains and say, look, I've, uh, I've not registered to that, so please uh, show me that uh, I did. And uh, well, so that would be that. But it's only on the 20. 5th of May 2018, that the new okay. uh, European uh, rule enters, so we still have time, but uh, it's a long run and we have many clients to, to sell. So Les it could make our lives easier in the long run. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's the Germans. They know what needs to be done <laughs> in advance. In, enough about no, you two. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, brilliant. I think I think we've covered a lot of the content. Now, I had uh, one important question for you, Thibaut, and I think Florin had a follow-up question. Um, so, really? do you prefer cats or dogs? Uh -huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, you, if you had to pick, if you had to pick. No, I can't give you the full answer because it would be so misplaced. So, I would say I would, I would rather I'd say cats. Okay. You want to? You want really to ask me that dumb question? Okay. Um, uh, the question is: If you were bounce, would you rather be a soft bounce or a hard bounce? What would you, What would you say? Uh, I, I would try to be a hot bounce, but uh, <laughs> that ship has sailed. <laughs> okay, that really? was mostly our preparation and fits brilliantly into this now. Thanks, Anthony.
that's that's no that's no worries. That's what we like to create, you know, that kind of nice atmosphere. But by all accounts, thanks Thibaut, and you've really filled us in with a lot of inform useful information there in terms of ISPs, filters, associations, and yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I hope that we'll um, do another collaboration soon. I have another Thank question. Much, well, are you we done? Is it? No, you go, you go for it, Florian. Sorry. <laughs> no, I have, I, have, I have another question. So, um, for the French oh. market, it's it's uh, sometimes uh, quite specific in Europe because uh, the people and the clients uh, need somebody uh, somebody on site who's speaking French. What's your point ah. on this? Do you see the same? You you mean if you open a ticket or you have a, an issue with an ISP? Um, yeah, yeah, generally. So uh, we also see it from the deliverability mm. side. The the clients uh, request somebody on site speaking French, and uh, for yeah. example, other companies uh, uh, or other countries are not not uh, requesting that. What, what we, would you say? Why is that the case? Because yeah, it's, uh, yes, it, it's a general. I would not say a problem, but it's an issue in France. Even though people speak a little English. Uh, they are not comfortable when they are in the in the workplace to have uh, to have uh, an open discussion in English. So it's true that they most of the time they request to have uh, uh, someone uh, who is able to to speak or write English. But uh, you can basically also uh, uh, reach them in, in English. I mean they are uh, bilingual also. So I think we've lost uh, Anthony. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that was that's crazy. Okay. No, that, no you're that's speaking really good English, and I and I think it's also important to 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 have this ability uh, to stay uh, on top on marks and so on. So, you you oh. seem to be a, a quite um, uh, yeah requested man in France, right? Everybody. I try like to, to be. I, mean, I, I try to be reachable. So yeah. that's why I was very very happy to to be able to. To meet with you and to and to participate to that great show that you did. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Timo. And I just just wanted to say I've got a little gift here for you when I come and visit. Oh, it's oh. got your name on it. It's a bottle of Bordeaux, 2015. Oh. So, it's uh -huh. the, you know. So is, <coughs> you live near Bordeaux. 2015 is a very very good vintage. It's gonna it's gonna hold very well. It's a, it was a really? very good. Uh, very there we good go. Year. I hope we can enjoy a glass together. Okay. Go for it, Brian. Um, Next time you come to Paris, uh, you just ring me. Ah, you're Brilliant. in Paris? You. I thought you're in Bordeaux. No, you're, you're based in Paris? I, I, I based in, in Paris, but I, I come from Bordeaux. Ah, nice, so nice one. That's the reason. We had our holidays in the past um, with my family in sulac sur mer Maybe you know that, maybe not. Yes, yes, very much, yeah. Ah, it's it's nice. very close to the nudist uh, area. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that's where I come from, uh, most likely. <laughs> No, that's okay. Cool. Okay. Thanks Great. for having you. Uh, I have no further questions. No, not sure about Anthony. You passed the interrogation, Thibaut. Well okay, done. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks. See you next uh, week. See you. Bye bye. bye. bye.